I've now cupped roasts three and four from the experiment and I was very surprised at the results. The two cups were quite different. And one of the things this, that this shows us is that whether you believe specifically in Scott Rao's theory around the flick and crash, whether you agree with that or not, we now know that rate of rise has a significant impact on the flavor of the roast. And if you're not looking at the flavor of the coffee, and if you're not looking at rate of rise as part of your roast profile, then you're missing out on useful information. Uh, for example, the two roasts, roast numbers three and four, uh, when we look at the uh, two roasts and we compare them side by side, we can see that by and large, the phases are very much similar and the overall roast time is very similar. There is some difference in drop temperature when we ejected the beans. But if you're not looking at rate of rise, you're going to miss a lot of that information. And then when you go to the cupping table and you start cupping, you may not have a complete picture as to why the two cups are different. And for me, that's pretty significant learning. So now we're going to take a look at the two roasts. We're going to use a new feature in Artisan 1.2, which was just released, that will allow us to set those two roasts side by side and see the difference in the phases themselves in a very useful visual way. We're looking at the cupping notes for the first roast of the day. And what we can see from the cupping notes is there was a mild floral or fruity aroma. Um, there was a grassy celery flavor to this roast. And we could certainly taste the oldness of the greens. These greens were past, they are past crop. They're about 16 months old. But it's still a drinkable coffee. Now I did notice in here that this, I did note in here that this was Marie's favorite of the two coffees. Marie is my wife. And Marie is sensitive to acidic flavors in coffee. She doesn't care for them. I'm the opposite. I care for them and I cannot necessarily pick them out as easily as she can. So I always have her taste coffees like this um, because she's a, good, she's a good litmus test of the acidity. Now we're going to look at the second roast and see how it compared. One thing to note about this second roast for the day is it spontaneously broke in the cupping bowl. This means that the roast was too light of a roast for cupping. Um, you need a darker roast, you need those oils to kind of seep out of the beans a bit so that the crust can all congeal and hold together. Uh, if you don't get a dark enough roast, your, uh, your crust on top of the bowl will break and sink. It had a similar mild floral and fruity aroma that was pleasing, but this one was uh, brighter with more acidity than the first. It also had the old flavors. I could taste the, the age of the beans, but again, this one was drinkable, and I was a bit surprised by that basically because of the age of the beans. Uh, and Marie agreed with that. And, and like I said, Marie has a, a much finer palate than I do. And um, so it's always good to get her opinion on these things. We're now looking at the two roasts laid on top of each other with a lot of the junk taken out so that uh, it's just a more simplistic view. The orange lines are the second roast for the day and the blue lines are the first roast of the day. These lines are the rate of rise, and these are the temperature, time temperature curve. Two things I want to note. The first is the acuity of this angle for the second roast is greater than the acuity of this one. So we have a tighter angle here after the turning point. That simply means that we, we had more heat in the second roast to do work. We had less heat in the first roast to do work. So Theoretically, the chemical reactions in the second roast had more heat available to them. Now, the other thing I wanted to note is the difference in these rates of rise. We can see in the, the first roast of the day, we had a significant exothermic flash that was unchecked. And uh, we did a little bit better job in the second roast of flattening that out. But again, 
just before second crack, which I did not roast into, but just before the second crack, I had exothermic flashes in both roasts. I didn't do a good job of anticipating those. Now, if we go back to the cupping notes, uh, I saw that there was significant differences between the two cups. The second roast was much brighter than the first cup. And given the similarities between these roast curves and the dissimilarities between the rates of rise, I have to assume that the major con contribution to the difference in the cups is the rates of rise. Now we get that further supported when we look at the phases stacked on top of each other down here. These three phases, the drying phase, the mayored phase, and the development phase, are very similar in the two roasts. I would say that this is statistically the same, these two phases, and the drying phase and the mayored phase between the two roasts are pretty much the same as well. There's very little difference. There's more difference here. That's about 20 seconds difference. But again, I, I don't see a major deviation between these two. So our two major differences between the phases are the, acu the acuity of this angle, so the more heat available in this roast, and also the major difference in the rates of rise. So at the end of the day, whether you agree or not with uh, Scott Rao's interpretation of the flick and crash, you can at least, we can all at least agree that the rate of rise is useful information. Our understanding of our profile is much richer when we include the rate of rise. And ultimately, having rich information like this and the ability to compare multiple roasts to each other in this fashion using the rate of rise is going to give you better control of your roast.